Hey, Neatards Friends Church. Just a couple reminders before I jump in here. Um, if you're in the vulnerable population right now, when you need groceries, will you please reach out, shoot me a text, a call, an email, um, and we'll organize a way for those of us who are younger or are not in the vulnerable population to help you out. I can't field all of that on my own, but I'm anticipating that as a church family, we can get that organized together. Uh, so let's keep reaching out to one another on the phone. And I wanna encourage all of you to respect the social distancing that we are being asked to do and being told is so important right now. It's really easy to think, well, I'm the exception to the rule. I, it won't happen to me. I won't be the one that passes it. Uh, so this second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, uh, I think we all, got, we all need to do that by uh, respecting what we're being asked to do. Um, Trump, the CDC, uh, Governor of Oregon, uh, they're all saying that, like I heard, 10 or more people are not supposed to be gathering for the next 15 days. And so it's too soon to say when we will gather again face to face. Uh, <laughs> it's adjusted constantly, but it's going to be a little while. So what to do? I could offer you a big long sermon video, uh, some kind of a church service and you get a one-hit wonder on Sunday, uh, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is too important to our community. I, I think that we need to be together to digest it. Uh, it. It's an event, It's we're taking it in, and then we need that around the table time to really work it out with one another. And besides that, this is a time that is full of stress and anxiety, and I'm not sure that just one big, long church service sermon video on Sunday is what any of you really need right now. So I'm going to be offering something else. Uh, I'm going to be offering a series of shorter videos that I'll just be putting out throughout the week and hoping that these videos do offer you some helpful ways to pray and think and act and worship as we make our way through this time. Um, on, on Sunday I will offer you some pointers on how you can, can worship, uh, whether it's with your family or uh, if you're by yourself, uh, how you can do that. But today, today we are looking at how to rest in God during these uncertain times. Uh, there's value to all kinds of prayer right now. We just finished looking at the Lord's Prayer. Uh, that's terrific. I hope you're praying that regularly. Um, there's just telling God your anxiety and, and how stressful this is. But I, I want to offer you another way of praying today that you might utilize, and that is centering prayer or sometimes it's called resting in God. Uh, but before I just tell you how to do it, I want to tell you how I slept the other night. Um, so while we're sleeping, our brains are still trying to organize all the information that we've taken in during the day. And so uh, <laughs> the other night, uh, my dreams were just these bizarre versions of trying to solve all the problems of COVID-19. And I woke up and it was time to get up. But when I, when I looked at the clock, I was thinking it was gonna say maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Uh, and, oh, it's morning. So I woke up completely exhausted. This is a stressful time. Uh, you wanna know what's going on with COVID-19, so you're probably checking your phone, listening to the radio, looking at social media, uh, watching the TV, and you're digesting a bunch of information, 
and it's necessary information and it creates a whole bunch of stress and whether you want to admit it or not your your body knows it it's it's affecting your biochemicals physiologically your thinking your behavior so shows up different ways for us muscle tension uh, irritable outbursts with a family member you just can't focus on your work you have headaches or all you want to do is sleep or you just can't sleep uh, for some people your brains like way over functioning for others it's under functioning and it's uh, a little bit of stress is good but you cram too much stress for too long chronic stress and there's all kinds of negative side effects and so looking ahead the next few weeks or months could easily turn into too much stress for our bodies now there are all these wonderful scriptures that tell us do not worry do not be anxious uh, Jesus says it the Apostle Paul says it over and over the Bible says fear not <laughs> but there's this question uh, okay where's that switch <laughs> um, where, where's the switch where I tell my brain and my body click don't be stressed out right now don't be anxious don't be afraid does such a switch exist well it's worth referencing the work of some important people there's a neuroscientist Andrew Newberg uh, he looks at how's your brain work in relationship to your spiritual life uh, there's a psychiatrist medical doctor Tim Jennings he's done a lot of similar work they tell us about this part of our brain called the anterior cingulate cortex it's right here between your eyes uh, slightly back from your forehead and the anterior cingulate cortex I'll just call it the ACC um, it's where our choices are actually made so all the fear going on in your head your fear center impulses um, your amygdala all that stuff and then all of your reasoning and your strategizing and your planning your prefrontal cortex they meet at the ACC so the ACC is where you resolve all of your internal tension and it's it's the processing point between your judgments and your emotions and it's where you experience empathy compassion love it's where you choose right from wrong so what they tell us is that what's going on right here uh, your ACC literally determines whether or not your decisions are happening out of fear or out of love well what's any of that have to do with centering prayer well the brain imaging studies have demonstrated what regular meditation uh, prayer resting in God centering prayer what it does for the ACC and it becomes more developed resting in God actually produces measurable growth in the anterior cingulate cortex um, there's a measurable decrease in the stress hormones in your body your blood pressure goes down your, your heart rate calms down and we need that right now uh, we need our anterior cingulate cortex to be healthy right now their research shows that uh, even 12 minutes a day of meditation can really make a difference if you're doing it regularly it can make a difference in the way your brain is functioning so we think about the Psalms over and over the Psalms talk about meditate meditate day and night Psalm 48 9 oh God we meditate on your unfailing love so I want to introduce you to this form of meditation centering prayer resting in God by telling you what it looked like for me yesterday story form so so yesterday evening Molly and I took the kids out to the bay and uh, while the kids played took a while to get them going but we did we sat down and we took a few minutes to do centering prayer so here's what you do uh, in centering prayer first of all you choose a word 
or a phrase that helps you focus on who God is. Something about the character of God. Because uh, you're not trying to empty your mind of all your stress and your worry. Rather, you're trying to fill your mind with the character of God. So maybe you choose a word, Abba, Father, Jesus, Spirit. Uh, maybe you choose a phrase, maybe a phrase from Scripture, something you've read recently. Uh, Lord, have mercy, peace that passes understanding, maybe one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Molly and I chose the phrase, you are faithful. Then we set our timer. We thought, well, maybe the kids can handle four minutes of playing on the beach. <laughs> uh, so four minutes. Uh, so hit start. I close my eyes and I, I focus all of my attention on this phrase and just start saying it in my mind kind of rhythmically you are faithful and of course your mind wanders if you try this it's going to happen to you too uh, i could hear cooper throwing rocks in the bay and elsewhere and i knew there were two ladies over there <laughs> and so i had to open my eyes and uh, Make sure he wasn't throwing rocks too close to them. When your mind wanders, you, you don't worry about it. You don't beat yourself up. You don't reset your timer. You just gently return to your phrase. You are faithful. And my mind wandered again. I thought, huh, I wonder if those ladies met here. Are they doing the social distancing thing? Start thinking about all the social isolation dynamics. And now, once again, I'm... Uh, distracted from my phrase and so I return just when you realize it you just gently come back you are faithful and continue to say that until voila the timer went off and we we timed it right uh, just shortly after that here came the kids uh, ready to ask us something if you can when your timer goes off it's nice to just kind of sit there for a moment. You may say, why a timer? Uh, just because it, knowing there's an end in sight can help you to focus deeply um, and say, I'm, I'm just doing this for whatever amount of time you choose. Um, as with any prayer practice, we don't evaluate it based on trying it once. We evaluate it based on I make it a regular rhythm in my life before I evaluate it. So I want to offer this to you. This is a time of so much stress. This is one way that you could engage in prayer and rest in God, a way that has been shown to also help your body, help the stress hormones that are going on inside of you. So that's my prayer for you. May you rest in God during these crazy times.